I started this series, I had great visions of conquering the world as Germany, building a strong Byzantium as Greece, or doing funny things with Russia. And I forgot I would have to play countries like Bhutan. So yay, today we'll be playing Bhutan. I have launched the Route 256 mod for this simply because I don't want to play Bhutan in base game. So at least this time, I have a bit of a focus tree. It's not ridiculously overpowered, but it gives me something to do, which is gonna be nice. Let's just uh, get cracking. All I can realistically try to do as Bhutan is see if I can capture some of my neighbors. Now, I know for a fact that this tree gives me some cores by attacking the plateau and some claims by attacking China. My goal here will be to conquer Tibet, grab as much of China as I can, and then we'll have to see what the world does. If I have an opportunity, maybe attack the Soviets for Mongolia or attack the British and try to cut down towards Calcutta and uh, do some damage there. We'll have to wait and see. And waiting is what we'll be doing for most of this game, unfortunately. So my editor has his work cut out for me. Look, some Sometimes I get tired of staring at a map, moving little icons around. I need something more. And that's where today's sponsor comes in. Watcher of Realms, a next-gen fantasy RPG. A feast your eyes on these incredible motion capture based character models. From rare heroes to top tier elites, these renders are stunning, amazing. And with over 100 unique heroes representing various races and factions, you'll have an impressive arsenal to unleash on enemy monsters. You can enjoy a rich storyline as you embark on a journey through diverse chapters, maps and levels and delve into the intriguing backstories of each hero. Now this game is undeniably one of the most visually striking RPGs of the year. Now engage in rewarding and strategic combat that requires careful hero placement, precise timing, skill utilization, and team coordination. Your strategies will directly impact the game's outcome, so choose your teams and factions wisely to overcome these obstacles. And I'm pretty sure fans of Hearts of Iron will find this easy to master. Also check out the awe-inspiring dragon effects in rendering. You can collaborate with guild partners to challenge powerful dragons and climb the rankings in the new world of Taya. If you seek an even greater thrill, however, However, you can confront the endless waves of enemies in the Demon Tide. You can defeat menacing monsters and bosses, and you get some rewards. Nice. Not limited to just PvE, you can also engage in PvP battles against other players and compete for the top rankings. Watcher of Realms stands out with practical features like auto enhancements and auto fight, streamlining, hero strengthening. And to celebrate the global launch of Watcher of Realms, you can join an exciting team competition event where you pick a side and you have a chance to win incredible loot such as iPhones, Xboxes, Nintendo Switches. You can check the link in the description for the event details. Don't miss out on this extraordinary RPG. Click the link down below or scan the on-screen QR code to embark on this unforgettable gaming experience. Trust me, you're really not going to regret this. Let's start by building a military factory. We have two sieves. Yay. <laughs> we have one mill. Yay. What else do we have? So, a mountainous people, so we're gonna be good. We have treaties with UK, so this is okay. Ah, but we are a defenseless country, so that's not great. And a backward economy, okay. Let's get cracking and see if we can turn this into something that's not a complete disaster. This teeny tiny country can become one of the titans of Asia, or at least I hope so. I think we'll have to flip either commie or fascist early. I'm thinking go fascist and I can team up with Japan to defeat China. Maybe grab some land here. Here and then as a fascist turn on the Soviets as well. We'll have to see how the world turns. Also, the fascist name for Bhutan is Empire of the Thunder Dragon. I'm sold on that. So it's time for some new ideas that unlocks our advisors. We can create an army that makes us no longer a defenseless country and we can start on some industry. So let's go with the new ideas first. As for research, there's like no point in doing anything militarily for now. I should just go ham on engineering and industry because I can't even train troops. I have one factory making really bad guns and that's it. Instead of get mechanical computing, I could get better guns and start making those maybe? Yeah, let's go with the radical nationalism here. If we can flip, that would be nice. We're gonna wait though. I don't need that right away. There's no point in flipping right now because we don't have an army or an industry. Let's go with create an army and then see if we can actually no, let's let's go grab education reform. All right. So we have a lot of things to do. Not a lot of time. Well, do have a lot of time because there's nothing happening where we are. In almost every situation, I would go with dispersed. But I think this is one of those cases where concentrated is 
probably better. We're going to make use of the fact that we're technically in the Allies. I'm just going to quickly plug in my supply hub into the British or the Indian Railway Network for future use. Might as well, while we're here, what else am I going to build? I'm thinking maybe get the industrial concern to get research done a little more quickly. I need to get some sort of base industry going and from there i will then need to uh get some manpower get an army and we can go from there but i need a base industry relatively quickly i'd like to set things in motion by 1939 maybe if i can eat tibet by then i'll be great so once i have this uh research slot i'm gonna go for create an army and after that, I'm probably going to head down aggressive attitude and mass conscription. Get myself 5% recruitable pop. I need to start with something. I need recruitable population. Then we'll build up everything else. I know this feels like there's not much going on because there isn't. There really isn't. I'm just talking a lot. My editor is going to be editing a whole lot of the initial years out. But... To my credit, there is nothing for us to do anyway. Hey, education reform, another research slot. Let's put that to actually four research slots. That's not bad. So what do I want? I'm thinking climate specific equipment. Winter clothing seems like a really good idea if I'm going to fight the Russians and I'm going to fight in the mountains of Tibet. Plus it leads to Jaeger infantry. Jaeger infantry, this is a route to 56 specific template, but these are essentially light troops that are really good in the cold and wilderness of the boreal forests essentially forest bonuses mountain bonuses marsh bonuses might be good or i can completely ignore that and and go for like the jungle stuff because of india and the desert stuff because of northern china i could go for shock troops shock troops are pretty decent as well or just straight up mountaineers i mean that's the simplest thing to do is to just get mountaineers and basic infantry really i think that will be my path mountaineers basic infantry and uh see from there let's also grab artillery then radical nationalism down into mass conscription that should get me some manpower i'm also mobilizing a little bit of manpower now yay let's go up to volunteer oh actually maybe not volunteer only i don't need the manpower yet it's only like half a percent maybe instead i want a little bit of stability no i want the manpower i do need the manpower let's go grab support equipment i'm also going to need to grab motorized i just realized yep I also need trains. So the Route to 56 research tree is a little different than the basic one. I like it. But I haven't played this mod all that much. So uh, it's a learning experience while we go. But the basics of the game are still well known to me. Also about time we spend a little bit on Chief of the Army. So we can get some army experience going. I like speed more than I like defense. So I'm going to go with the armor maneuver expert. Next is probably going to be the popular figurehead. And after that, so many things we need. So little time for any of it. So little political power as well. So this is our infantry template. Not exactly impressive. Can I make it a little bit bigger? Something like this. 12 width. Still not amazing, but something we can work with. Usually I would use a mod to rename every one of these divisions into a channel member, but it seems to be conflicting with the Route to 56 mod, so it's not there. I'll have to do this manually. So we'll start training some boys. Now I admit I am tempted to go to partial mobilization first, but I think the extra stability is going to be more valuable. Let's go grab popular figurehead. Stability is always just really good. Now let's go grab the inspection. This will allow me to improve my military standards, which I probably could use and leads to more factories. Also, arms deliveries are going to be pretty cool, I think. It would appear Mao is at war with both Ma and Shangxi at the same time. I don't think the Chinese Soviet Republic is going to win this. Now, ideally, these will be 30 width, but I don't have the manpower to have them anywhere near that size. So this will have to do. Let's just start with two for now. Again, rename them to my channel members. If you want to see your name here, join up and you too can join the victorious armies of Bitter Steel. I think one of the big bottlenecks for me is simply going to be manpower. Not just how much I can get, but how fast I can get it. Very small <laughs> amounts are mobilizing. So we need to get mobilization speed up by going to limited conscription and uh, grabbing things like extra war support to get mobilization speed up even faster. I think war support affects mobilization speed. I'm not sure. I thought I remembered that, but I could be remembering that wrong. All right, I'm going to go and grab uh, Dragon Storm. This gives me a nice bonus to fascism support. I know it's a little early or maybe a little late even. It will allow me to grab the national referendum, allow me to flip and allows me to grab war economy. I just think it's a good idea. Never mind, let's do it this way. I'm gonna cheat a tiny bit. I'm gonna grab anti-fascist raids, mostly because, well, free stability. And then we will have the referendum anyway. <laughs> 
We are now the Thunder Dragon Empire. And we got a good leader. These are all RNG leaders. So you could get somebody with really terrible traits, no traits or decent traits. And these look all right. Militia proponent, good. Military monopolies, also good. Even though it cost me a little bit of political power. I like this. This came out really good. I am choosing to go with superior firepower because it is simply the strongest doctrine. Now, if only I could get men out there so I could use the strongest doctrine. I could also set the legal status of women. A limited rights gives me 50 weekly manpower and a little bit more recruitable pop. Though that's not huge. And traditional roles, less recruitable pop, which is going to be terrible, but again, not that huge. But more factory output, more production efficiency. I think I want this. Enforced patriarchies. Mm, not really that good. No, let's go with traditional roles. Yeah, and we're going to keep going. Get as many factories out of these trees as I can while I work my way down all these various different trees. Hopefully we'll be able to get something done. But it's about time we move over to war economy. We got the war support. We got the right political affiliation. I got a little sidetracked clicking other buttons for which I apologize. But hey, if you don't have anything, you can't really waste anything either. I'm also working on improving the military standards, which is going to be great. And soon we'll be able to denounce the Treaty of Punaka, which makes us no longer a member of the Allies and just bye bye Britain. Well, while I'm here, I'm going to make a couple more changes. We're going to add engineers and the breath of fire. Love that. <laughs> <laughs> to both my mountaineers and my basic infantry and support anti-air at some point as well if I can ever afford the expense because let's face it super expensive and it's about time we left the UK in 10 days we will no longer be their puppet and will leave the allies the thunder dragon empire will stand on its own or fall on its own we'll see this will just have to be enough I have 37,000 in the field now these guys will probably need to reinforce with the remaining manpower okay the amount of units is fine. I'm going to have them exercise a little. I'm going to wait for manpower to take up. And once we hit that required 40,000, I'm going to take the focus and we're going to knock out our uh, Tibetan neighbors. All right, we have the required 40,000 manpower in the field. We now move to attack the plateau. Within 70 days, we're going to strike. We're going to rush straight for Lhasa and capitulate Tibet quickly. That will give me the required cores. From there, we can see then infantry and command. Yep, right. We're going to get up all those bonuses if we can. We need to be strong for what is to come. We will be tested. We will be fiercely tested. Fortunately, it's just manpower we're lacking, not actual equipment and stuff. So that's good. Let's also grab some stuff that I completely forgot about grabbing. Let's see a professional officer corps is good the state serves the military is decent i should have done that earlier because i'm an idiot i forgot unit elitism is actually pretty cool i can get a lot of mountaineers this way i'm gonna grab that let's see what that is that's a, a route to 56 thing bold attack is fine and then smoke and fire we'll see if we can blast our way into tibet all right let's get the commando expert as well simply declare war before anybody gets any wiser and the goal here is simple i want to go to last knock them out quickly. My units should have the strength to do it. They're not at full strength, but should be strong enough to knock over whatever they have. In an immediate strike towards Lhasa and northwards. So we're gonna build a railroad because I need to get that supply hub. That's little things in life. But yeah, now that the army's on the move, the members are tearing it up here. We'll have no problems here. Absolutely no problems. Members will tear through this. So Tibet's almost already defeated. Uh, I think I need that victory point that is probably it fun fact all of these states in tibet are considered my core so i don't have to occupy them to get the full benefit as a result massive influx of manpower which means i can make my divisions bigger and better and punchier and just start having a really good time let's make these boys 18 with for now. I'll make him bring him up to 30 in a bit. And same for the infantry. We'll make them bigger as well. Currently, I just don't have the required guns to make it happen. So in future, they will be bigger. Three victory points. There goes Tibet. Great news. Select all. And we have defeated our first enemy. And now we're going to set up for our next one. This should be relatively easy because China's very likely to be extremely busy. And with a little luck and precise movement, I might be able to take the close supply hub of Golmut if I can micro 
micromanage my way there. And from Kotan, push into Kashgar and get that supply hub as well. I should focus on building railways though, because railways are going to be super important. So yeah, at least the Thunder Dragon Empire is no longer limited to a teeny tiny sliver of land. We're a real, well, almost a real country now. We have three civilian factories and nine mills. My God, it's wonderful. So we're going to wait until we're a little better off in terms of equipment and resources and supply before we stab the Chinese in the back. We got time. We got time. We don't need to do that right away. We can still build up a teeny tiny tiny a little bit. I'm also going to build a railway towards this side, Kashgar. I'm hoping to catch these guys with their pants down. Much is going to depend on what the uh, Soviet troops in the area do. Leningrad has fallen. Seriously, Finland has... Finland's managed to take Leningrad right after... <laughs> It's amazing. They'll never hold it, but it's amazing. Well, March 1940, I think it's about time we got in on the fun. Swallow the white sun. Centuries of Chinese rule have left severe scars in the face and body of our society. The people of Bhutan will now rise up and take what's rightfully theirs. Perfect. Sounds like jolly good time. All right. So we'll be setting up all along this front. Uh, we'll be fighting the Chinese United Front after all. And I'm thinking use the Mountaineers as a sort of spearhead towards Golmut. I will need the Mountaineers at their best performance for this. Let's try and make it something snappy and stop the exercises. We've burned enough equipment as it is. We've worked on their template a little bit, so added a little bit of artillery. I hope to add two or three more, bring it up to a nice 30 width, and then we're going to go to town. And there's something wrong with the game because it doesn't remember every division I've renamed. So again, I rename every single one of my divisions into one of the members. It seems to be forgetting it every single time. So again, I need to manually update this because the mod doesn't work with Route to 56. All right, we have our war goal on every Every single one of these small Chinese nations and we're gonna go for I'm gonna delete the fallback line I'm going to declare war on the Ma collective and the mountaineers are gonna head straight for Golmut it is important that we are able to capture it as soon as possible and I'm also going to individually declare war on Xing Xinyang Xinyang are gonna go for a trip towards Kashgar very important that we are able to capture Kashgar as well I'm gonna slow the game down and for focuses again we're gonna keep working on proving the military improving the industry to an extent that well, we, we can actually do it. China's going to be a nightmare to fight, but we will fight them nonetheless. And it does look like our concentrated attack on Golmut is going to play out. So we build the railway to ensure we have supply in the region. That is vital. It is absolutely vital that we get supply there. As for China itself, I could try and push on Kanding, but I doubt I'll get there. It's a couple tiles away. Maybe when I redeploy my Mountaineers, we can give it a go. Until then, though, I'm going to hold over here. We're headed towards Kashi. Kashgar. I have a lot of railways to build, though. I'm about to take Kashgar as well. If I can keep up the pressure, I should be able to take the city. That will give me two supply hubs I've taken. I'll then knock out Qingyang first, then move on to Ma. And from there, we'll see if we can deal with the Japanese. I'm not going to join or fight the Japanese just yet. I mean... Why would I? All right, sweet. I've taken Kashgar. From there, along with a pincer movement from the other side of the Gobi Desert, or Taklamankanan, I'll take out Xinjiang. Then we'll move on Ma. Then we'll move on China itself. Everything is coming up Millhouse. We've got this. I think we've got this at least. All right, railway network is all connected up as far as I could manage to do that. So everything, well, every hub I've captured is connected. I had thought to try and make a push for Kanding, but that is currently not in the card. So instead, I'm going to move my Mountaineers up here and we're gonna slice through towards the north here try to cut off some divisions destroy them and move on from there it does look like the chinese are launching the occasional counterattack, and they might be able to push me here and there unfortunate why is that why am i getting pushed so easily their units aren't even that good oh well, this is exceptionally annoying i'm really being pushed back despite my units being clearly superior to theirs in pretty much every respect they're just overwhelming me they barely have any attack and they're still overwhelming me through sheer numbers at least japan is starting to push from the other side i guess not that it helps me much it's actually a nuisance i launch a counter-attack on this flank trying to destroy some units here and then uh, start pushing up towards Urumki. Maybe we can shorten the line somehow. It is just getting stupid right now. How hard the Chinese are pushing me. My units are so much better than theirs and they suck. You know what? Doesn't matter that they suck. We're still pushing. We're still killing them. 
we're gonna end this, but we're gonna have to end this quickly. All mountaineers clean up the south. If I can get the south cleaned up, I won't have to worry as much, and I can get my elite units into the positions I want them in. Oh my god, China has actually managed to push me across the river. How? China is fielding garbage. Literal garbage that has virtually no stats. And it pushed across a major river into deserts? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. We'll solve that in a bit. I'm gonna shorten my line somewhat. Well, at least they've taken Urumqi and secured local supply here. And Qingyang doesn't really have all that much left to it. Another encircle about to happen here. We can get that closed. Perfect. More divisions to the slaughter. If we could take Hami, that will be the end of Qingyang. Japan is overwhelming the Republic of China though. So slowly but surely we are going to win in tandem with the Japanese. I, I just want it to be more my thing than a Japanese victory because I don't want to, you know, I don't want to share. There we go. Xinyang click has capitulated. Well, this is nasty. Okay, so all out assault on all of those isolated units. Hopefully we can make something happen here that's not too horrible. So pockets here, pockets there. We're getting them. We're gonna get them. We'll have them soon. Railway network's looking spicy. I just need a couple more of the northern hubs to really get the juices flowing. The supply juices, obviously. We've got a good amount of kills though. So we've lost 48,000 brave Bhutanese soldiers, but... We have slain a reasonable amount of Chinese, 240,000, and uh, an assortment of others. And with a little luck, we might be able to get another encirclement in here if our units would just hurry up and... Yes, and up here again, yes, maybe, and that will allow me to encircle eight Chinese divisions if they can just take that tile. All right, eight. Chinese divisions encircled. Ri oh, seriously? I hate my units. They just they just don't know how to play this game. Anyway, they're they're still encircled, so yay. Now let's kill these guys off before they can get out again. We've also linked up with the Japanese. Uh do I wanna join their faction? See, if I join their faction, it becomes easier for them to take all the stuff I've taken and vice versa. Also, if I join their faction, this thing will bypass. I don't think I'm going to be fighting Japan, though. There, there is room for two empires here for now. So I think I want to make friends with Japan for the purpose of carving up China. Yeah, let's just join the faction for now. Might not be the brightest idea I've had, but I think it's going to end up paying dividends. It's going to be worth it in the end, I think. There goes Ma. That only leaves the Republic of China severely, and I do mean severely, weakened, and let's see if we can issue the death blow. Oh no, there's Huangxi as well, but well, they're, they're not doing all that well. I'm just gonna launch an all-out offensive all along the line. It will be expensive, I know, but I want to see if I can overwhelm the remains of China now by applying brutal pressure. Being in the Japanese faction, I'm gonna use the fact that they are committing troops to pull my armies away from like main front lines. Hopefully that doesn't end up biting me in the ass, which it, it very well might. <laughs> I'm gonna try and reorganize my forces a little to see if I can't get a little bit of concentrated pressure in. Create some pockets here and try to focus on taking out Huangxi. That will essentially encircle the Republic of China and then we can come in from all sides all at once and just crush them. I also want to maximize my own gains here by not giving the Japanese too much occupation. We've already pushed up to a nice 12% participation and we have a good amount of occupation so I want to get as much out of this peace deal as I could possibly get. And with Huangxi capitulating it's all ogre now for the Republic of China. The last one standing, their army's been decimated. I've killed half a million, oh, almost half a million of them. I'm gonna try and drive a wedge between their last remaining pockets. Destroy the Chinese armies. That's what I have to do here. So it looks like we're up to 13% participation. I hope we can get a juicy peace deal out of this. China China's gone. They're gonna collapse into teeny tiny pockets that we now just have to clean up once we can get them encircled. And from there, it's just a matter of mopping up. It is gonna be annoying because they're all gonna be bunched into like two or three tiles, but eh. Oh, oh, Barbarossa's kicked off. And there goes the Republic of China. Time to smash and grab, get the best possible peace deal that we can, really. Uh, <laughs> it's gonna be difficult to grab everything, but we'll do our best. And that ends the peace deal with a pretty reasonable victory for us. We got most of the resource-rich areas and population-rich areas of the south. Through unknown shenanigans, the Japanese AI kept contesting the province of Ganan until neither of us 
else could take it. Thanks, Japan. And as a result, there is now an independent China in the middle of China. So that annoys the hell out of me. And of course, uh, Japan puppeted the rest of China. Actually, not a very bad peace deal here. And this opens up the way to recruit additional units. So we're going to build up more forces. Going to build up my railways as well. And I'm going to try and strike out at the Raj soon. But looks like Siam and Japan are making some gains here. So if I want anything out of this, I'm going to need to strike soon. Once this focus finishes, I'll come in swinging from the north, try and cut towards the uh, cape here and then we'll do all the damage we can. It's going to be very exciting because we're not really a superpower just yet, but I am very much hoping that we can deal a decisive blow here. Knock out India, evaluate where we stand and either call the campaign or see if we can stab the Soviets in the back as well. Because I'll be honest, I'm not going island hopping because I have no navy, I have no air force. Once India falls, pretty much we're going to be done. Oh, continuation war. Finland's in. Yay, that's good news for Italy. <laughs> this is do or die. We are going to commit to a war with the Allies, and that's going to suck. We also have ports that are currently unguarded, so hopefully no big naval invasions are going to hit us. Once India falls over, we're going to see about securing our ports and maybe think about attacking the USSR. But for now, let's just see about just dealing with India first, okay? We're going to declare war. Yay, and it's, it's, it's going to suck. I mean, I, I have no qualms about this. Um, this is definitely going to suck. We're at war with the allies, and that's usually not a happy-go-lucky time. But we're going to go for it. We're going to see what kind of damage we can do here. We come thundering down from the mountains. Now, what I am most concerned about is the fact that I will very, very likely be forced to fight Americans here soon. And Americans are going to be annoying because there's a lot of them. A whole lot of them. But, hey, we got our first little pocket in. It's not huge. It's not very impressive but it is a pocket and i appreciate you yes we've made it to dhaka at great cost let's see if we can actually close that side of the pincer okay so we need to hold on one end and push hard on the other All right, things are going reasonably well we're pushing out we've got the occasional encirclement working for us oh that is a lot of nepalese troops trapped here see if we can destroy them and eh, maybe eventually we're pushing out that's great no major naval invasions have hit us yet so gotta keep it up i guess just gotta keep it up all right, so the eastern part of India, so mainly Burma, is contained. The troops here are being destroyed. From there, we can then initiate the push on the rest of India. I think we're going to win in this region, at least. And then it's just going to be a matter of uh, making sure we don't get naval invaded and destroyed in the process, because the naval invasions, well, the naval invasions might just kill us in the end. But until that time, until that time, we fight. And we fight ferociously. With the entire eastern fringe of India cleaned up, so that will be like Burma, it's time to turn our main assault on what's left of India. We're gonna try and destroy it. Uh, oh, what was that? <laughs> British units have landed in Bangkok, but there's the giant army outside Bangkok. Re retake the city. Just AI, just retake the city. There. So I'm gonna see if I can knock out India now. There are still some some holdouts, some, some stragglers, a lot of allied divisions still kicking around here. But I think my units are better and I have maybe not the advantage but I do think my units have the strength to make it happen. Just gotta keep the momentum going. Yes, India is being carved up nicely. The Tathunder Dragon Empire rules. We shall dominate Southeast Asia. They all mocked mighty Bhutan. They mocked us, but now look at them run. There goes the Republic of India. Now on to Operation Mopping Up. There we go. We have the entire subcontinent under our control. Time to divert troops to quickly take out Hong Kong as well. After Hong Kong, who knows, maybe I can be inclined to help out in Malaysia. And I think I'm going to call it there because there's really not much else I can do. There is this nonsense here. Uh, I, I could go help out Germany, but it's 1943. The Allies are fully committed. I think we've done what we came here to do. Japan might still die, but I don't care. I am still pretty capable of holding my own, though we're not technically a major power, which is annoying. But I feel like we've done 
much and more we've definitely been punching above our weight class here and everybody in the east seems to be having a good time west not so much so there's a bunch of rebellions everywhere pockets within pockets just the death struggle of the ussr and the reich finland's still here doing its thing like eh. I, I don't see Germany winning this, but it's going to take a while for them to lose. And neither do I see Japan winning this, but they're on the right track. They might just be strong enough to hold out if they don't squander their fleet. We have swept the British out of Singapore. We don't have a navy. We don't have an air force. There's very little else for us to do unless Japan decides it wants to fight the Soviets, which I hope it doesn't. I say we can conclude this run here. The Thunder Dragon Empire is looking very spicy indeed. We've gone from this one province, Bhutan, to all of this baby and we are lacking some stuff but we have a decent army we're pretty good here on the world stage we have 39 mils not bad we have 24 sieves again not great not terrible we're we're competent we're a regional power and we will only get stronger from here however i really don't know what else to do i don't want to fight the soviets without japan i don't think japan really has what it takes to fight both the allies and the soviets so uh let's just declare victory and call it here anyway i dreaded playing bhutan but this mod actually made it reasonably enjoyable without making it incredibly overpowered so i hope you guys enjoyed watching this video as well and i hope you'll enjoy this next one as well see ya